Hi, I'm Isaac Hempstead Wright, and you're watching In Studio with The Hollywood Reporter. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for um, me. Okay, so before, uh, I just kind of want to start with the first episode of season eight and all of the Bran and Jamie memes that are popping up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love them. It was the last I've always wanted to be a meme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, were you expecting that kind of reaction at all? Do you, can you ever sort of, re I don't know if you can ever uh, expect something. Do you know, it's, it's hard to think because it's been so long since we last had a first episode come out. Yeah. In a sense, we've kind of forgotten the hysteria that follows. Um, but certainly, I think this episode more than ever, because it's so fast-paced, yeah. A, a lot of the first episodes generally are kind of easing you in and setting you up for, for what's to follow in the season, whereas because we've only got six episodes, um, season eight, episode one, has immediately got you know loads of really key plot points. Yeah. So I think because of that, it, it's a very exciting episode, and there are quite a few funny moments, especially yeah. with Bran. But that one in particular was, uh, what was that like when you were filming it? Did you, because you almost kind of smile. There's like a yeah. little, not like a full-on smile, but there's something there. Yeah, sort of there. flicker of, yeah. of something. Yeah, so uh, what was that like when you were filming? Did you do different? I mean, it was just, again, a lot of, a lot of it was just me sitting in that courtyard, stuck in that wheelchair. And it was really funny, because of all the furs that are set um, over it, for continuity, I can't get up between takes because they're like carefully positioned. So I, I was literally sitting there for <laughs> quite a long time. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's quite a long time ago we filmed that now. Yeah. Um, okay. So I have to cast my mind back. But uh, but yeah, it was just kind of that, we were trying to get a real intensity there. Yeah. Um, something that would really freak Jamie out. Yeah, what, and what do you think is going through Bran's mind? Because it's kind of, you know, he's obviously very internal. He's holding yeah. something in there. But what, what do you think is going through his mind when he finally is sort of... Reunited with this this foe. Do you know it's 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 hard to tell what's going on in Bran's mind um, because he is the three eyed raven. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the way the three eyed raven views things is as key points in a timeline. It, he doesn't view them as wow that's my old friend or that's this person or whatever. It's just this is an interesting new chapter now yeah. that Jamie has arrived at Winterfell. Um, but I think coming back to to that stare, I think it's far creepier um, to have just this sort of emotionless direct stare at Jamie rather than have him going welcome back or something like that I think it's, it's got far more of a uh, it's, yeah, far punchier yeah yeah it just sort of dawned on me the other day that the three eyed raven is very interesting there's a lot going on there's lots of power with that mm -hmm. but what what is his ultimate like what's your goal you know, do you know that yet or are you maybe not, not allowed to say not really I mean I think because he is the three eyed raven it's it, even me who plays him it's very hard to tell exactly what, what, what is going on in that yeah. that crazy brain because he can see everything and he knows you know, I mean it's, what it's, it's, it's impossible to imagine what it would be like to have the entire history of the universe downloaded into your head I yeah. think that would make anybody slightly weird I think the thing is we know that there is an ancient bond between the Three-Eyed Raven and the White Walkers and the Children of the Forest. Mm -hmm. um, and the Three-Eyed Raven is firmly on the team of the living. So I think it's fair to say the Three-Eyed Raven's ultimate goal is, is for the living to survive. Mm. Um, and we've, we've seen him sort of mention that in episode one. He goes, you know, we don't have time for all this. Um, the Night King's coming. And, and that is way more important than any kind of... Um, you know, petty squabbling going on. Yeah, because you do sort of notice that the Night King has uh, seems to have a bit of a I don't know if it's a rivalry or a vendetta against him. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's got him. something against uh, something against him. Yeah. Oh, is that going to come up maybe? Well, I don't know. You have to wait and okay, see. Okay, but, okay. but I mean, we, we've <laughs> seen we saw that the Children of the Forest, who are basically the Three Eyed Ravens, I suppose sort of minions, um, <laughs> created either the Night King or the first White Walker. We don't really know what, but. In a sense, the Three-Eyed Raven is responsible, um, and the Children of the Forest are responsible for everything that has followed. It was yeah. there. It was this weapon they created that's just got massively out of control. So, uh, you know, there's a definite rivalry there, or a, a, a perhaps more on the side of the Night King, um, trying yeah. to come and you know destroy Bran. I guess it all has to be for a reason, though, too, because if they, it, you know, if the Three-Eyed Raven can see everything and sort of has access to everything, then maybe this is all part of a larger plan. I don't know. The, Could be. The, it all gets very, the, it all gets very meta. <laughs> there's lots of theories and everything yeah. out there. Um, so I know you've been asked a million times about theories, but let's go through a few. What about Bran the Bil Bran is Brandon the Builder. Oh yeah, that's quite How a neat do, one. You know, I mean, they all thoughts? the thing the thing with Bran and the Three Eyed Raven is because we've seen a hint of you know interfering with timelines. Yeah. Um, 
it makes him very easy to theorize about. Cause you can go, well, he can go back in time and do that. We can go yeah. forward in time and do this. Yeah, I think I, I like that theory. You like I, the theory, okay. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of all the of all the time travel theme theories because I think Bran has pretty much learnt his lesson. Yeah. It was made very very clear by the previous three eyed raven that when you start interfering with things in the past, it, it wreaks havoc, as we saw with the hold the door episode. Ugh. Um, so. So what I feel like, and especially now he's not just Bran, he's mm-hmm. a three-eyed raven, it's not like he's still a teenager, he's like, no, I'll give it another shot. I think he pretty much knows that that's off the cards, off yeah. the table. Yeah, oh, that hold the door scene. Yeah. That, I, we just rewatched uh, oh, you it's know, preparation. It's, it's it, it makes me cry every time, it's so yeah. sad. Um, and I'm sure it was sad for you also, because you had become really close with yeah. the, the actor yeah. who, who plays Hodor. Um, okay, so another theory was, uh, oh, the Night King being a Targaryen? Oh, oh, that, that's one? not how I thought that sentence was going to go. <laughs> um, I know you've been asked about Bran yeah. being the Night King, which I, we've seen the Night King, and like we saw him, it's clearly not yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a different actor with red hair. No! <laughs> um, I mean, um, unless there's some crazy shape-shifting yeah, going yeah. on. I just, the Night yeah. King's a Targaryen. What yeah, Targaryen I mean, do they think he is? I don't know if there's if I read a specific one, but just that he is somehow... I think oh, it all is in like, the think, ice and fire. But in, in the books... There's this different character called the mm. Knight's King, which oh. is kind of who the Knight King is Maybe based people on. Got and he is a Targaryen, I think. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's what it yeah. was. Um, what do you think about the how much we should be reading into the Night King's like messages, the symbols and the things that they're that they're leaving? Well, the sort of spirally people. Yeah, thing. the spirally. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't really know what that means. Okay. I think we we've seen if you go back to the episode where the Night King or the first White Walker was created, um, you see it's it's a sort of emblem of the children of the forest. Yeah. That big stone circle kind of mm-hmm. thing. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that's just uh, their means of communication because they can't really talk. Right. I think that's just their way of going, we're coming for you. Yeah, yeah, it's just like a little, maybe it's something visual also yeah. for a little graffiti tag. <laughs> That's a, yeah, let's just set some human body <laughs> a parts really on fire. Scary <laughs> a really scary graffiti tag. really scary one, exactly. Um, and yeah, actually on that note, there are a lot of like sort of horror elements. One of the first scenes, if maybe it's the first scene of the series, I can't remember, but is White Walkers, and it's pretty scary. It is, yeah, yeah. Um, are there more sort of horror elements yet to come that we can sort of... Well, uh, I mean, there are... Uh, uh, I'm not sure about horror, but it's certainly horrific elements, yeah. I think, uh, uh, are on their way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, as we know, it's all it's all coming to a, a, a fore. Yeah. Um, that there's going to be a battle. Something like that is going to happen. Yeah. Um, and so, and it's going to be brutal. Um, we know the dead and the army of the dead aren't, aren't yeah. the nicest of people to uh, fight against. So. Yeah. There's going to be some pretty gruesome bits. You watch the show, right? I yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, do you have a favorite character that you like to watch? Do you know, controversially, I actually really like Jamie Lannister. Oh. I think he just has such an interesting character arc. Yeah. Um, because he's a character who, in the very first episode, we're made to think that he's definitely a bad guy. He's unequivocally not one of the good ones. Um, and then as time goes on, his morals become less and less clear and his allegiances become less and less clear. And I think there's an, also an interesting parallel with Bran, where he loses his his right hand, which mm-hmm. is you know his his sword hand, and and something that defines him in the way that Bran's legs defined him. So they're both characters who've had to uh, adapt to a loss, um, and and I think that's made them perhaps into better people, yeah. or uh, certainly Jamie. Yeah, I, I think I love watching Jamie Lannister's story. Yeah, he's great. There, so many of the characters are very complicated, mm. and you can say that about a lot of the characters, where you mm. you feel maybe one way about them, and then as the series goes on. Um, it's kind of no one can really be put in a box of good guy or bad yeah, guy. It's all very yeah. gray. What was maybe one of the most other than Hodor? I feel like that has to be the most brutal death for yeah. you. Um, but what was there any other death that was kind of brutal uh, for you to it watch? Has to be Oberyn's mm. Oberyn's death. Yeah. Because I I actually hadn't read the um, the script for that episode, oh, no. um, and so I had no idea that was coming. I was watching it going, oh, cool, yeah, the, the underdog's winning for one. Oh, no, no, his head's exploded. <laughs> yeah, um, we all felt that, that way. That <laughs> was utterly, utterly brutal. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty sad. Whenever you look back, I mean, you've spent a huge chunk of your life on this show, uh, working on this show. Would you kind of have it any other way, just as an actor? I, I mean, it's it must be kind of strange, uh, but great also at the same time, yeah. you know? I mean... Uh, 
It's hard to say. It's like saying, "How would you relive your childhood if you could if you could yeah. redo it?" But you kind of um, signed on for a job at the where you ten, ten when you say yeah. so. It's like so if I sign on for a job at ten, my entire like, life. Yeah, no. Do you know what? I don't think there is anything I would change. I, I truly mean this. I think Game of Thrones has been one of the best possible TV shows to grow up on. Yeah. You look at other you know shows where kids have been you know really exposed to kind of a, a very stagey um, kind of actory thing from from day one, whereas. For us, it's always been, it's always been such a sort of family environment. It hasn't felt like we're kids being worked and we have to do this and get a publicist and do whatever. It's felt quite organic, and certainly my experience of it has just been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it was always, especially in the in the early years when I was still really young, sort of you know, 12, 13, 14, I just had a huge amount of, of fun on set, um, yeah. and and everyone made sure it was fun, and I wasn't stressed about having to perform a certain way or whatever. Good. So I, I don't think I would have it any other way. Um, so, uh, the last thing I wanted to ask was, I know you can't obviously give me anything, but, um, as we look forward to the, the last four episodes that we're going to see in, of the series, except for the prequels, I guess, um, if you can maybe in a vague way, like any sort of way that you can tell us what we can look forward to or how we will be, what will we be feeling, um, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming it's a mixed well, bag of have emotions. Have you seen from these first two episodes kind of, they have been the calm before the storm, um, and what's to follow is going to be quite uh, unprecedented in, in, in Game of Thrones world. It's it's pretty much non-stop. Um, it's brutal, it's terrifying, and, and I honestly think you're going to, at one point or another, experience every single uh, emotion on the spectrum of emotions. <laughs> um, so uh, okay. there's really nothing I could say to prepare you for it other than just get some tissues and uh, and uh, yeah sit on your sofa and, and enjoy sit on your couch and enjoy it wonderful and I lied actually my last question is about you and acting what are you looking forward to I mean I know it's probably you've said it's bittersweet you know leaving the show are you at all looking forward to sort of um, branching out doing other types of roles or are you looking yeah. forward to that yeah no we're very excited to sort of kind of find the next thing um, yeah. and it's a sort of you know you've got to look and choose carefully coming off something from Game of Thrones because yeah. we've been spoiled with you know the best TV <laughs> show ever um, for at least for my first ever job so uh, yeah. so I'm going to take my time to find the next thing that's right for me but I'm very much looking forward to it. Wonderful well it's been great watching you on the show you're great the show is great um, looking forward to the last four episodes and uh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, thank you so much and thank you for watching.